do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends now we are going to talk about isomers that takes place in organic compounds so this is a study that we could uh, we see in organic compounds so what are isomers and what are the different types of isomers that we usually see in organic compounds let us talk about that so basically isomers are nothing but the compounds having same molecular formula but different structural formula and properties it should also have different properties are called as isomers of each other so let me give an example that uh, when it comes to isomers then uh, the molecular formula of both the isomers or we could say of both the compounds would be the same but they would differ in the structural formula so if they are differing in the structural formula then obviously the chemical properties or the physical properties that would be different uh, when they when we compare to each other so that makes the two molecules to be isomers of each other but it is not necessary that only two molecules would be isomers of each other but there will be multiple uh, molecules that could be isomers of each other and based on this isomers this isomers are basically of different types and what are the types let us talk about that also so now we are going to talk about isomers and uh, isomerism is the nothing but the phenomenon or the property that are shown by the molecules that will have the same uh, molecular structure or molecular formula but different structural formula or different properties than that uh, of to each other so based on that we are now talking about isomerism means the phenomenon in which we could see the isomer property so the isomerism is basically divided into two parts that is structural isomers and stereo isomers structural isomers as the name suggests that this isomers will have differ difference in the uh, structural uh, Uh, structural formula or we could say as the arrangement uh, of the with each other while that of uh, when it comes to stereo it stereo would be the arrangement of the atoms uh, they would different in the arrangement of the atoms in the space in the spatial arrangement so these are the two difference between structural and stereo we are going to talk about this in a very deep manner but let us talk about what are the types of structural isomers so structural isomers are basically divided into uh, or this isomerisms are basically divided into three uh, parts that is chain isomerism position isomerism and functional isomerism so now talking about chain isomerism suppose if we consider two molecules and the two molecules will have the same molecular formula and hence they are known as isomers and they will have different properties so in this case when we are talking about chain isomerism or when we are talking about chain isomers the two molecules will have same molecular formula but different would be that they will have different carbon skeleton uh, when compared to each other so based on that this is known as chain isomer this is what we are going to talk in our next lecture also in a very deep detail but for uh, the instant let us talk about what is what is position isomers so position isomers are the isomers that would differ in the position of the functional group and what are those we'll take an example also so as to show uh, that is what is actually position isomer and last that is functional isomers this is a type of we see structural isomers in which the both the isomers will be having the same molecular formula but what they would differ they would differ in the functional group and in that case since we are talking that the both the uh, isomers or both the molecules will have same uh, molecular formula that means the num the total number of uh, atoms or we could say that the number of atoms like uh, carbon hydrogen or whatever it is it would be the same but it would differ in the functional group suppose if we are talking about an alcohol so alcohol consist a group we know as oh group so that alcohol can be also be written in the form of ether also so how we'll uh, give an example of that also so let us talk about stereo isomers stereo isomers as i have said stereo isomers are nothing but the isomer that have the uh, different uh, arrangement of the atoms in space or we could say that different uh, spatial uh, arrangement of the atoms but meanwhile we could also say that uh, it could also happen that when we are talking about the chain isomers chain isomers are related to the uh, carbon skeleton uh, and they would different in the carbon skeleton and because of which here we could also form 
the stereo isomers but stereo isomers are in a very deep detail where we could see that the uh, atoms each atoms are been arranged in a different manner compared to that of uh, the other one so they could be showing geometrical isomers or they could be showing optical isomers so there would be certain difference certain difference not i would say that each atom would be differing uh, in the spatial element but there would be certain difference where we could see that uh, the other uh, atoms would be far uh, different that is uh, when it comes to spatial element they would be different when compared to each other so geometrical isomers are basically the one which are known as cis trans isomers so it is a very common example that we are going to see and uh, talking about the optical isomers optical isomers are basically uh, under the stereo isomers which has the property of optical uh, activity that is they have the capability or they have the ability to uh, rotate the plane polarized light when the light is passing through and when the plane polarized light is passing through the solution or when passing through the molecule so some uh, molecule would show dextro uh, dex some molecules are said to be so some molecules are said to be dextro molecules while some molecules are said to be levo molecules even though they will have the same uh, molecular formula and uh, but the structural formula will be different uh, and in that case also we could also say in a very deep manner that uh, the spatial arrangement of the atom would be different in that case so that's the reason that we are talking about isomerisms and these are the types of isomerism that we have talked about so now let us talk about uh, the structural isomerism that is the starting about uh, the chain isomerism so for that we have an example suppose if uh, we have uh, the molecular formula when it comes uh, when it comes to uh, alkane suppose when we have a molecular formula like something like c4 h10 so this is the molecular formula so this molecular formula can be written in this format also so that is ch3 ch2 CH2, CH3. So this is the first thing that you are uh, you are seeing that this molecular formula can be converted into uh, the structural formula that we have. But in this case also we could write it in another manner. Suppose if we have another molecule like uh, this one. So in this case, what happens is as you could see, the both are having four carbon atoms as well as they are having 10 hydrogen atoms in this case also there are four carbon atoms while 10 hydrogen atoms here also you could see that there are basically four carbon atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms so what makes them this two molecules to be isomers of each other and moreover we could say what does this makes to be called as basically chain isomers The main thing to call it as chain isomer is the skeleton, is the structure or we could say the skeleton. So as we could see here that the carbons are arranged in a straight uh, chain. So we could see that uh, all the carbon atoms are uh, arranged in a straight chain. But in this case as we could see that there is a branch. So this branch makes the difference between two. And yes, moreover when it comes to IUPAC also, this IUPAC, the name of this would be basically N-butane or we could say as butane. But that of this could be said to be, when it comes to IUPAC, it would be said to be 2-methyl propane. So this is what the two difference is. Not just in the name, in, in case of the IUPAC name, but depends on the property also. So this is an open chain compound. Even this is an open chain molecule. But the thing is, here we could see a branch thing. So therefore, the property of this would be comparatively different compared to the this molecule that we have. So they have different properties as well as we could see that the structural formula is also been different and hence they are said to be the chain isomerism and the main content to call it as chain isomerism is the carbon skeleton or carbon carbon arrangement that it has. So this is an example of chain isomerism. So now let us call uh, talk about the other one that uh, position isomerism. So now let us talk about position isomerism. Suppose if we have a molecular formula that is, I would take the example like this one. Suppose this is the molecular formula and based on this suppose if we have two isomers. So for that we could write easily that is the first one, the first isomer that we could write that is CH3, CH2, 
CH2 and in this case suppose it is Cl and again I would add another because the carbon number is basically 3 in this case so therefore I would write it as CH2 Cl so in this case I could see that there are four carbon atoms that is 1 2 3 and 4 and talking about the hydrogen it should be 9 so therefore 3 plus 2 that is 5 plus 4 that makes 9 hydrogen atom and there is one uh, chlorine atom so as you we could see that there is one chlorine atom but the another isomerism is also possible or that we have is basically CH3 CH2 CH Cl and in this case CH3 so in this case also suppose if we compare so we know that there are basically four carbon atoms and moreover we could see that there are uh, basically nine hydrogen atoms and one chlorine atom so that makes the both the molecules to have the same molecular formula that is C4H9Cl but what makes the difference the difference is the position of the functional group so this is the first this is the functional group that we are observing here so this is the Cl that is chlorine atom so it has been attached to the carbon atom which could be said in according to the IUPC so this would be the first carbon atom through which it has been attached so so Cl has been attached to the first carbon atom while in the second case that we have this Cl is being attached to the second carbon atom when we compare to IUPC because this would be the first carbon atom this would be the second so in this case the chlorine atom attachment to the carbon skeleton is been different so in this case also if we could see that this is a straight chain carbon atom uh, while the cl is been attached to the first carbon atom while in this case the cl is attached to the second carbon atom or we could say the second position so therefore that's the reason that they are called to be position isomers because they differ in the uh, position uh, of the functional group that are being attached in a carbon skeleton as we could see here so this is one of the example to understand that what is actually position isomerism so now let us talk about what are actually functional isomerism so now let us understand what is functional isomerism Suppose if uh, we have a molecular formula, again I would uh, give an example like this one, suppose that is C4 H9 OH or we could also write it as that is C4 H10 O. So this is what we could write. So talking about this thing, uh, we could write uh, the formula into a structural formula for example the first one would be suppose ch3 ch2 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 oh so this is what we could write and uh, the another example that we have that we could write is this manner that is ch3 ch2 o ch2 ch3 suppose if this two uh, molecules that we have so if we compare that what would be the number of carbon atoms so it is found to be the number of carbon atom is 4 and talking about the number of hydrogen atom the number of hydrogen atom in this case would be basically 10 so in both the cases we could see that the number of carbon atom as well as the number of uh, hydrogen atom is basically the same uh, when we compare both of these molecules and we could also see that there is a presence of one oxygen so in here also there is a presence of oxygen while in the second molecule also we could see there is a presence of oxygen so this makes the both of them to have the same molecular formula that is C4H10O but what makes them to be different with each other that is the functional group yes so the functional group that I am going to talk about is here is as you could see that when I am talking about the first molecule so basically OH is present as a functional group or we could say the hydroxyl group is been present as the functional group so since the hydroxyl group is been present in the functional group this makes the molecule to be called as an alcohol while in this case while in the second case that I'm talking about so the second case consists of oxygen which has been attached to two alkyl groups so making this to be called as ether so the both are different one is alcohol while the other one is ether and in this case the both have the same molecular formula that is C4H10O so that's the reason they make uh, to be known as they are isomers that is true but moreover we could say when we are talking in a deep sense so they are basically functional isomers of each other 
so this is is just an example to show that what are actually functional isomers so this is nothing but a functional isomers where suppose if we have to name uh, according to the ipc so the name of this would be basically one because uh, the oh is group is attached to the first carbon atom so we could also write the name as butane one all that is or one butanol or butane one all so this is the name that we could write and talking about the second one we could write the name as methoxy so ethoxy ethane so this is the ipc name of this compound so the both are different with each other when it comes to uh, isomers so now talking about the stereoisomer So now let us talk about stereoisomers. So uh, in the stereoisomer, as we have got to know that they will have uh, the same molecular formula, but different spatial arrangement of the atoms. So for example, when we are talking about the first uh, uh, type of stereoisomers, uh, and in that case, the first uh, case of the stereoisomer that we know is basically geometrical isomers. So let us talk about geometrical isomers. So geometric isomers are basically known as EZ isomers. Basically shown by uh, alkenes. So let me give an example of alkene where you could see that uh, uh, what would be the um, that is an example of geometric isomers. So suppose if we have A molecule like this one and for another case that is we have a molecule like this one so if you compare the both the two molecules and moreover you could say that the both the molecules are the same itself but the thing is they have different arrangement uh, the spatial arrangement of uh, the atoms for example in this case the total number of carbon here is two so I could write the isomer the molecular formula as to be C2 and total number of hydrogen in this case is basically 4 and Cl is also present 2 times so here also I could write the same that is the total number of carbon atom is 2 hydrogen is uh, basically 2 in this case I have written 4 so it is 2 and again the chlorine is present to be 2 so but what makes the difference the difference is nothing but the arrangement as you could see that uh, if this is the double bond that we have and below which we could find that there are two uh, hydrogen atoms and in this case basically there are two chlorine atoms that are present above uh, the space or above the plane so basically this stereo isomer is nothing but it deals with the 3d arrangement or three dimensional arrangement that's the reason we have called it as spatial arrangement so spatial is arrangement is nothing but uh, the arrangement in space and when it comes to space we know that uh, we are talking about a 3d arrangement so therefore this is a 3d arrangement but we won't write it uh, in a 2d so this is the way to write on 2d paper that we have so talking about this one that uh, this have different uh, spatial arrangement as you could see that the cl is present uh, uh, above and we could see that uh, cl one one of the cl is also present below the plane if we consider in that manner so in this case basically what we could see is the spatial the arrangement of the chlorine atom is different when we compare to each other so that makes the two to be called as geometrical isomers so this is what and that's the reason they are named as ez isomers because as you could see that when it comes to as the both the cl are present here so therefore this would be called as z isomer and in this case suppose if the both are being opposite to each other when we observe this thing so therefore they, they it could be called as e isomers so therefore these are basically known as cis isomers or uh, trans isomers that is what we know so basically in this case we could see that the both the cl items are on the same side of the plane so therefore this would be called as cis isomer and since they both the cls or both the h you could consider it in any manner so that's going to be called as trans isomer so this was an example of a geometric isomer let us talk about the last one that we have so the last one that we had was basically optical isomer
so optical isomers are being uh, shown by the molecules that have optical activity or the tendency to rotate the plane polarized light when the light uh, when the plane polarized light is passed through that molecule suppose in that case only if i am uh, representing uh, a molecule suppose two molecules if i am representing having the same molecular formula suppose in this case Suppose if this, if we consider the, uh, this molecule and in this case the both the R are the same that is the both the alkyl groups are same as well as both this R dash represents an alkyl group which is different from that of this alkyl group and in this case this R star or this R star the both are same and here we could see that the, uh, that the uh, molecular formula of both the molecules are found to be the same but what makes them differ and what makes them to be called as isomer and especially uh, when we when it comes to that is optical isomers so as we could see because this carbon is uh, the one which has uh, different valency means all the valency uh, all the uh, other groups that are been attached to this carbon all the groups are different from each other so therefore this asterisk stands for the carbon which is basically chiral so chiral carbon atoms are those carbon atoms uh, or uh, we could say where uh, all the carbon all the groups that has been attached to the carbon atoms are different so now this makes the molecule to be having a optical activity this could possess op optical activity and the, when light is passed when the plane pressure light is passed through this uh, molecule suppose if, ha if it has a property to rotate the light towards the um, uh, right uh, on the right plane or we could say on the right direction uh, that is there are two types of we know that when a plane pressure light is uh, uh, passed through a solution or passed through a molecule so we could find two of the possibilities that is one is the light is rotated towards the right side while the other uh, example is the light is rotated towards the left side so when the light is rotated towards the right side that molecule will have uh, will possess a property known as dextro property and that will known as d that is this stands for dextro that rotates the light towards the um, right direction and while levo it stands for left so that means the light will uh, that will pass through the solution it will um, deviate the light towards the left direction or to a left angle so this makes the two uh, isomers that will have the same uh, that is molecular ma molecular uh, formula but different optical activity and hence they are said to be optical isomers of each other and yes one thing is sure that that should contain at least one uh, carbon atom that should be asymmetric or that is the thing that we are talked about so this were the examples of the isomers or general isomer, uh, uh, isomers that we are looking in uh, the organic compounds so that's it Thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have liked this video and you have understood that what are the different types of isomers that we see in uh, organic compounds so share this video with the friends and yes, don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much